almost everyone has heard of Nancy Drew. She surely has hundreds of books and about half a dozen different shows and movies that have been released throughout the years. There is something there for anyone who wants to hear the adventures of a spunky girl detective. Even video games, believe it or not. Let me tell you a little bit about them, where they came from, what they are, and how they may have recently died. Video game company Her Interactive started publishing Nancy Drew Mystery Games in 1998 and has produced 33 main titles in the past 20 years. They're point-and-click puzzle games, each with a different mystery to solve and suspects to interrogate. They may not have advanced graphics or intriguing mechanics to compete with the mainstream game market, but despite this, Her Interactive managed to build a fairly large and loyal fanbase in their two decades of regularly releasing these games. People fell in love with the characters and the unique puzzles, and of course the interesting character of Nancy herself, who is portrayed as a nosy, occasionally socially untacked, and fashion disaster of a detective whose face you never get to see. The original tagline for the series was always, for girls who aren't afraid of a mouse. A little pun about computers, cause mice, and also the bravery it takes for Nancy to confront scoundrels and spooks. Nancy is a nice role model in that she's intelligent, courageous, and doesn't take nonsense from anyone. And she does it without seeming cliché. Because she does have her own faults. Most of the games are somewhat short, which allowed the company to put out one or two games each year regularly until 2015. And we'll come back to that year very soon, just you wait. The first game, Secrets Can Kill, started out the series as an interesting mix of pre-rendered 3D backdrops with 2D characters. The second game in the series moved to a more complete 3D look, with each character being modeled as well. The graphics continued to progress from limited and almost robotic movement to the much more lifelike graphics of some of the latest games, like Labyrinth of Lies and Sea of Darkness. Each new game in the series seemed to offer more and more good things. Not just the graphics, but gameplay and design aspects too. While the games were sometimes a bit inconsistent in overarching storylines and characters that appeared in multiple games, it was also a fun part of the series in that each game could stand fine on its own, while still offering fun callbacks to past titles for those who played through them all. So when the 33rd game was announced through the teaser trailer at the end of Sea of Darkness, which would be titled Midnight in Salem, fans were excited. It promised an adventure involving the family of Nancy's frenemy slash detective rival Deirdre Shannon, who have been in two previous games so far. It was supposed to come out around the end of 2015 to follow the trend of most Nancy Drew games coming out in either May or October, but that didn't happen. Her interactive kept putting major delays on the game, which had never happened before, while still offering some promising tidbits of character art to keep the fans interested in the meantime. But after plenty of statements the game was coming next year or soon, fans started giving up hope that the game was ever going to be released. It kind of felt like the Nancy Drew series was coming to an end. It wouldn't have been surprising if it did never get released. A change of CEOs in 2014 brought a lot of consequent changes to the company. They fired the voice actress of Nancy as well, who had been the same throughout the whole series. The other staff was significantly cut back too. But despite all these losses, Her pulled through and offered a trailer for the game, saying it would come out at the end of 2019. The trailer was received rather negatively due to the decreasing graphics quality of the characters, but many fans still vowed to play it when it came out. Including me. After over four years with no new games, what else was the Clue Crew supposed to do? Unfortunately, the game offered a plethora of issues right off the bat. Midnight in Salem runs on a different engine than the previous games do. That means that it doesn't have pre-rendered animations and backgrounds, which makes the game require a lot more processing power to run. A lot of people couldn't even play the game because of it. This isn't surprising since most players are more mystery fans than hardcore gamers with high-end PCs. Your average laptop will have a hard time running it, even at the lowest settings. Which is strange considering the graphics are far from gorgeous. The game is just so poorly optimized that a lot of people had to get their game refunded, which surely hurt the company even more than they already were. But for those who could get into the game, it was still negatively perceived. The game freshened up some things with the gameplay and layout, which were not an issue at all. The ability to look at items in a 3D view was really cool. The story was rather interesting, and fans liked having the return of the Hardy Boys as secondary characters. You'd get used to the graphics and the sometimes confusing movement controls after a little while, but the most unforgivable thing perhaps was the lack of puzzles. The game did have puzzles, don't get me wrong, 
but they were significantly less than their more saturated presence in the older titles. To make things worse, if you played in the senior detective mode, which makes things more challenging, most puzzles didn't even change at all. So in this game, they took the most core aspect of the gameplay and diminished it. I will agree it's really disappointing to have less than 10 puzzles when they're usually a creative highlight and a nice break from hearing characters confess they may or may not have a motive. Plus, most of these few puzzles are pretty dumbed down and easy to get through very quickly. But some were fine and really fun. There's a lot of this back and forth of what's good or not, especially in smaller reasons people disliked the game. Yeah, the graphics and animations are bad, but some great games have lower end graphics. It shouldn't make or break the game when the old games can be enjoyed with their poor graphics, right? And yeah, maybe they recycled the whole ghost concept from Ghost of Thornton Hall, but the ghosts were kind of fun, weren't they? Oh, but some things felt less forgivable to hardcore fans. Nancy Drew games have never stayed completely the same, but there are different eras that are easy to spot in the layout, and this started a new era for sure. But it was still jarring to get almost completely rid of the old way the games were often set up, with Nancy starting the mystery at her desk. I think some people didn't like the way they continued the storyline of Nancy and her boyfriend Ned, giving them drama that had seemed to have been resolved in the last game, but most everyone still enjoyed Nancy's interactions with the Hardy Boys, and the way her relationship with Deirdre was built upon a bit more. There were a lot of little details like that that people liked, but overall the response was very negative. I managed to overlook a lot of the issues, but maybe I'm just not as observant as the other detectives out there. Fans were perhaps most upset about the way they changed Nancy's voice actress with little notice. It could have been a move the company made to save money, as you'll hear Lonnie Manella, the old voice actress, in much more famous games like the Koopalines in Super Smash Bros, or the monsters in The Last of Us, or it could have been maybe to help appeal to a younger audience. The previous voice actress is 70 now, and her voice has always been a bit more gruff, you could say. The new voice actress is much younger and sounds more of what you'd expect of an 18-year-old woman, so it likely would sound more suiting to someone watching a trailer for the game with no previous context. But Lonnie Manella's voice is very individual and classic to the series, so I can understand why old fans would be upset, although I like the new one a lot as well. She did a fantastic job, and at least they kept the other recurring characters' voices. Although it does make you wonder, why'd they fire Nancy if not the others? So we do have this behind the scenes drama of the voice actors changing, but there's even more farther back behind the scenes that are even more interesting to look at. And it's where it gets complicated when it comes to putting blame on her interactive for making a flop of a game. Because the game itself was made almost entirely by a different company. While the story was likely still written by her, the game creation was outsourced to this other company, Mipumi Games. That might explain why everything looks a little janky and there aren't so many puzzles. From what I can tell, the other games Mipumi has made are definitely incomparable to the old style of Nancy Drew games, so it makes complete sense that what they created would look different. And so, well, you might want to blame Mipumi instead of her interactive, I don't think any blame should actually be put on them in this case. If her interactive was going to outsource, they should have gone with a company who could have done a better job at replicating their style. However, perhaps they wanted a newer style to be more modern looking to attract new customers. It's hard to say, although it definitely seems likely since they really had the idea to make this one VR compatible. Very modern, but that didn't even happen. So, oh well for that. But even in changing the Nancy logo from magnifying glass to flashlight and skirt to pants, you can see they really wanted it to be quite modern. It does seem like it's trying too hard while failing miserably at almost everything it wanted to achieve. But again, I actually liked Midnight in Salem, although I agree it does have issues. I thought the actors did a great job, the dialogue was entertaining, and some of the music is magnificent. But now this offers yet another problem for the company. How are they going to recover from this? Many fans think that Midnight in Salem was perhaps just a bit of a Final Fantasy sort of situation. Either it saves the company, or it dies forever. And considering how the game came out, it seems like the series ending definitely could happen. This is the first game in a long time, maybe the first ever in the series, to not have a teaser for the next game at the end of the credits. So fans lost hope. However, there have been a few recent comments made that suggest her interactive is working on the 34th game. 
Time will tell if it's true. Maybe a lot of time, considering how long this last one took. Still, it's hard to say if they'll listen enough to the criticisms of Midnight in Salem to maintain the patience of their fanbase. I am really interested to see where the Nancy Drew series goes next, if it does keep going. And I'm really glad that the fanbase for the older games is still going strong, even if they don't like the new one. I'm always seeing new memes about them on Tumblr, and a lot of people are way deeper into all of the lore of this franchise and the development of the games than I likely ever could be. There are a lot of other sources elsewhere with significantly more knowledge than I could hope to share in this video, so go seek them out if you're interested in finding out more. You know, do a little detective work of your own. So yes, I am no expert on any of this, and feel free to correct me on anything I got wrong. And I hope you found this video interesting because I definitely find these sorts of things really fascinating to dive into, and I really only scratched the surface of everything that happened in the four years of Midnight in Salem's development. Video game history is really groovy to me, and all you guys are groovy too. Thanks so much for watching! If you enjoy videos like this, check out the rest of my channel and consider subscribing. Liking the video is an easy way to show some support too. Have a fantastic day, everyone.